Evening, Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Now this is going to be episode 128 and I just want to clarify something. Is that I was sent an article today earlier. Now I wonder if it was someone who was trying to be scurrilous. They sent me an article about, um, uh, where was it? Um, four men woke in Woking murdered, uh, four jailed after Woking man murdered at wedding. And Peter Fury, Huey Fury, Peter Fury Jr. And they, and they murdered Samuel Barr. Or, or uh, Michael Fury, he got convicted. Now, someone's pointed out that Peter Fury, the uncle of Tyson Fury, um, is a different Peter Fury. And as I replied to him, I mean, it's very difficult to keep up with these people, right? These scum, okay, right? Because... They inbreed so much, right, that brothers or sisters, uh, mothers, are, uh, you know, the father shakes the sister, the, the daughters, they're all inbred. Incest is rife, right, and they all name them the same. They're all Peters, you know, Peter this and Peter that and Huey this and Pikey Bill and all that kind of carrying on, right? It's so hard to keep up, right, and that's why they're all related, cousins and all this carry on. And that's why you see a lot of them, right? They've got this kind of moon kisser, this kind of inbred look about them, right? They all look, sort of look the same. It's because what's happened, the gene pool is very, very closely knit. You get brothers having sex with a sister and then they have kids and all that carry on. Yeah, right? It's documented. Okay, how they carry on? Well, anyway, here's a story which... Right, is which can't be disputed. So if I've got that wrong, I'm sorry about that. Well, but I'm sure they're they're related. The Woking Furies who got done, uh, one got done for murder and another one for for that. I'm sure they're all related. Okay. So if I've got the wrong Fury, I'm sorry about that. But I'm sure you know they're all related anyway. As I say, you know they 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 inbreed and incest is like a an everyday occurrence. Right, so now this one, right, it's no two ways about this one. It's in the Daily Mirror from uh, the 9th of January 2016, and it was updated on the 4th of February 2016. Exclusive. Tyson Fury mentor uncle was drug crime baron who ran amphetamine empire from inside jail. Peter Fury credited with masterminding his nephew's triumph over Vladimir uh, Klitschko stalked Manchester's notorious underworld for decades. The mentor behind boxer Tyson Fury's remarkable rise to the world championship was once one of Britain's most feared crime lords. Peter Fury is the heavyweight champ's uncle and has been hailed as the guardian angel who tamed the six foot nine star's fi uh, fiery personality. They are such a tight unit that Tyson, 27, as he was then, would give up his world titles if his uncle ever abandoned his corner. Big Hitting Tyson said, If it wasn't with Peter, I wouldn't be in boxing. I wouldn't train with anyone else. But a Sunday People investigation reveals how the 47-year-old trainer once built an extensive illegal empire at the heart of the gangland drug scene in the northwest of England. In contrast to the sweat-stained gym in Lancashire where he hones Tyson's skills, Peter enjoys a life of luxury in the millionaire playgrounds of the French Riviera. He owns a Cannes villa and, a, and last month posted a Twitter picture of him standing by a black McLaren 570S coupe sports car which costs upwards of £144,000. Given a thumbs up, he wrote, Wonder who's just bought this super machine. So you remember in that interview when he was saying that the papers made it up because he was with his mate and his friend had bought this uh, McLaren and he was just standing there, um, you know, having a f and his photograph was taken by the paparazzi. It wasn't. It was a stage photograph, right? Because he, Peter Fury, right, gave a thumbs up and he wrote on social media, Wonder who's just bought this super machine. Right, and then it's got here a photograph of him by this black McLaren. Okay, 
Playboy Lifestyle. Peter with Flash McLaren in picture he put out on Twitter. So it was him who put the picture out. It wasn't the newspapers, you see. It only appeared in the newspapers after Peter Fury put it out himself on Twitter. See, they got you. Know what I mean, if you're going to be a liar, you've got to have a good memory. The Permatang trainer, Peter Fury, is known for his love of Ferraris and Porsches and has had the personalised plate PPF1. Peter, who's, who is credited with masterminding Fury's sensational triumph over Ukrainian Vladimir Klitschko in November, is a convicted drugs baron who stalked Manchester's notorious underworld for decades. Although he has been forced to pay back his ill-gotten gains following his convictions, handing over the best part of £1 million to UK authorities. Born into a family of travellers, Peter built his stronghold in Stockport, Greater Manchester, where he oversaw the dealing of the potentially lethal drug amphetamine. He was jailed for 10 years in 1995 for possession and intent to supply, only to continue orchestrating his business from behind bars. In 2008, he got another two years for drug-related money laundering. Four years ago, a court ordered him to pay back the assets and funds he had hidden from the court. He had set up his drug business in an industrial unit in rural Helm Helmshaw. Peter imported 66% pure amphetamine from Belgium, cut it, then distributed it around the north. He bought a Porsche 911 for £63,000 cash while still living in a caravan. A court heard that Peter Fury was a man of considerable intelligence who has set up a complex business network using 12 different names and accounts in America, Jersey, the Isle of Man, Spain, Belgium and Ireland. Throughout, he continued to insist that he made his money by car dealing, boxing and bare-knuckle fighting. Steve Baldwin, Regional Head of Investigations for the Serious Organised Crime Agency, Soccer, warned at the time, Soccer is determined to strip criminals of their lifestyle. Convicted traffickers should take this as a hard lesson. Hiding criminal assets does not put it beyond reach. It's time to hand back those, hand back the, illic the illegal profit, illicit profits. Sorry, let me read that again. Convicted traffickers should take this as a hard lesson. Hiding criminal assets does not put it beyond reach. It's time to hand back the illicit profits. Peter now vehemently insists he has gone straight and that his current wealth is from legitimate business, he told Boxing Monthly. I've just finished paying nearly a million quid to the government. Now I have to show people that I don't get anything, get into anything. I'm a recluse, really. The police have a lots of informants and intelligence, so they know I'm not active in anything. I'm happy with that. He claims training Tyson and his own son, Huey, an exciting heavyweight prospect, has helped him sort out his life and given him fresh fresh focus. Tyson was contra a controversial entry in, in the Sports Personality of the Year Awards after making a series of homophobic and sexist comments and threatening journalist Oliver Holt. Oh, I've never heard about that one. So Tyson Fury threatened a journalist, Oliver Holt, as well as his homophobic and sexist comments and his anti-Semitic comments as well, and racist comments as well. More than 140,000 people signed a petition demanding that he be removed from the shortlist, but the BBC stood firm. Tyson says he and his uncle are a great team, adding we have been big influences in each other's lives. Well, there you go. Yeah, of course he has. Yes. And Pete has been such a big influence in Tyson's life that he taught him the drug business. They're all in it together. Honestly, all that nonsense about, I don't know this, don't know that. The Furies and the Kinnahans are all part of the drug super cartel. They're all in it together. Peter Fury getting drugs off of Daniel Kinnahan. And Daniel Kinnahan gets paid via Bob Arum. When Bob Arum pays um, $2 million for... Of for three fights or four fights, 
of Tyson Fury as an advisor to Daniel Kenahan, and it wasn't. It was drug money, right, for the drugs that he supplied to Peter Fury to sell. They're a, they're a big drugs cartel. And to be honest with you, Tyson Fury being the heavyweight champion of the world is just a distraction. <laughs> right, they're criminals, all of them. Violent, right, illiterate bullies. Intimidating, antisocial bullies, all of them. And I'm calling them out. You know, I'm sick to death of it. I'm sick of these bullies, right? Throwing their weight around, right? As if they think that they're that, that, that they own the place. Well, they don't. I mean, when have you ever heard that? Someone put on the BBC Sports Personality of the Year Awards, 140,000 people signed a petition, a petition demanding that Tyson Fury be removed. See, because the public know, but they live in fear. Well, I'm not frightened. I'm not scared of anyone. No one frightens me. I ain't hard to find. And I'm calling them out. I'm calling the Furies out, the Kinnahans, all of them. They've all got blood on their hands. Right? For hundreds, thousands of people have died. They've destroyed lives. They've destroyed families with their drugs, with their dirty, filthy drugs by the ton that they've, right, they've been distributing all around the UK, Ireland, Europe, and everywhere. Death and destruction has followed them. Honestly, it's like revelations, it is. You know what I mean? Anyway, more than that, right, let's get back to the article. Without Peter, I wouldn't be in the position today. Without me, he wouldn't be either, you see? We have been like guardian angels for each other. It works, and we are a close unit. Trouble outside the ring is no stranger to the Fury family. Tyson's home was petrol bombed just days before a fight last February. Here you go. See? Drug well disputes. Tyson Fury's home was um, firebombed. Now, this is back in when? 2000 and... Um, let me go right up to the top. 16. 2016, right, his, his house was firebombed. Okay, now that don't happen to normal people, law-abiding people, even if they're boxers. Trouble outside the ring is no stranger to the Fury family. Tyson's home was petrol-bombed just days before a fight last February. Two lit bombs were placed on the bonnets of cars in the driveway of his modest bungalow in Haysham, Lancashire. One exploded, destroying his £12,000 Volkswagen Passat, but the other, on a BMW estate, failed to ignite. The £150,000 house was empty as the fighter, wife Paris 25, and their daughter, Venezuela, fucking Venezuela, honestly, who, who names their child Venezuela? Right, five, and their son, Prince. Honestly, what are these people? Three were at their uncle's, their uncle's French training base. He has now moved to a more secure home. Tyson's dad, John, 51, was jailed for gouging out the eye of a former friend at a car auction over a 12-year-old feud triggered by a row over a bottle of beer. John declared himself as the toughest man in Britain before plunging his fingers into O.T. Sykes' eye socket, leaving him half blind. John begged... Manchester Crown Court for mercy, saying, I'm worried about my son. His boxing career is on the line. He got 11 years but was re released early and had to get special permission to leave the country to watch his son's title fight in Dusseldorf, Germany, in November. Five months later, after five months after the petrol bombing, Tyson's uncle Huey, 50, died after a bizarre accident while he was unhitching a caravan. Oh, yeah. The traveller's inquest heard he suffered head injuries, a broken arm and a broken shin bone after the caravan tumbled on him in Manchester. But after his leg was put in a cast, he left hospital without telling doctors and without collecting anti-blood clotting medication. A week later, he went back in agony and had to undergo emergency surgery. Tyson pulled out of a fight to be by his uncle's side. After two months in intensive care, Huey died from a blood clot. Well, that's a terrible tragedy. Right? You know, no two ways about it. 
Given all that has gone on around him, Peter Fury claims he was sucked into the criminal underworld. Oh, fuck you know. He told online blog BoxingScene.com, I was wild when I was younger. I'd see someone with a nice pair of trainers on and I'd want to have a fight with them. What's he got a fetish then about trainers, sneakers? What on earth would you want to have a fight with someone when they are wearing a nice set of sneakers, you know, or trainers? Then anyone who wanted protection would come to me because I was seen as a tough young fella. One thing led to another. I went to, from looking after people to looking after areas to looking after cities. But he claims his time in prison changed him for the better. He said, there is a life down there that you don't want to see. That's where you are in prison. But it didn't stop him carrying on his amphetamine drug business from behind bars. You're in hell on earth. The man sitting next to you can easily put a knife through your neck because you're there in for life and, and are in despair with nothing to lose. People have no idea what it's like. Going inside made me realise what life was about and what I was missing. They say bad things can turn into good things. Unless you've had that experience, you don't realise how good life can be. Peter was ordered to pay back his ill-gotten gains or face another four years behind bars and then still repay the full amount on his release. A spokesman for the National Crime Agency said Peter Fury paid the full amount back to the court and complied with an order requiring him to submit all his financial details for nine years. Right, wonder where he got the money then. 700000 it was more. And it was paid. Right, do you think Daniel Kennehan could have given him the 700000 to pay that order? And then he worked it off by selling drugs for the Kennehan cartel. But I'm telling you, they're all in it together. Now, the episode 127, if I have made a mistake um, with uh, the previous Furies on the Woking murder, I'll just apologise for that. Right, but, but I mean, guaranteed, they're all related. Guaranteed, you've got Michael Fury, Peter Fury Jr., Peter Fury, Huey Fury. Right, they're all they're they're all related, interbred. You know what I mean, incest and all that game, right? So, to be honest with you, you know it's very difficult to get it all together. Well, anyway, right, that's just a little update that I've got today. Right, it's the third one I've done today, um, and so you can go and have a listen to that and uh, see what you think. 17 minutes, well, that's not too bad, right? And for those of you on Instagram, I tried to put episode 125 up, um, Sunday Reflections, and it wouldn't load up on Instagram because of copyright or something. So if you want to keep up with all the episodes, right, go to Art Hostage at YouTube, right? They're all up there, okay? The Sunday Reflections 125, that's up, up on YouTube, okay, or on Spotify. Okay, well, anyway, this is um, Art Hostage, episode 128, right? I'm um, clarifying the Peter Furies, um, whether he was uh, in the Woking thing. He may not have been and probably wasn't, so I'm sorry for that. But just explaining the, the true history of Peter Fury and his drugs, okay, and the close links that they got with the Kinnahan cartel. And stay tuned, right, because it's going to be changing every day. Okay, and there's going to be some updates. I'm not going to mention it now, right? But we'll see it unfold, right, in the week. So Art Hostage, signing off.